Welcome back guys and today we're talking about tips for early career teachers or ECTs. They used to be called NQTs. I've done a video which I'll link up there all about NQTs and tips for that. This is all about ECTs. We're going to get straight into this. So let's get started. I've gone through and I think you know what some of the li links and some of the ideas on there are absolute gems and they're really good for you. Some of them I'm not so sure about. So we're going to go through some of them together and I'm going to let you know what I think and how whether those things are going to be good for you or are going to be bad for you whether or not you need to prioritize those bits. So here we are, we have got our first link. I think this is pretty much the first thing that came up when I searched for ECT tips on Google. And it's from High Speed Trading and they've gone through and whole lot of stuff about what the period is. Like I said, I've done a video up there somewhere all about that link and I'll put the link in the description down below too. But they've written a whole load of tips for NQTs or for ECTs about how to prepare for it. So let's go through. First of all, they've said choosing a school. Now they've listed all the schools you can do your training in and they've said when choosing a school, it's important to find the right one for you. Now I think this one is massive guys and first of all it's really important to pick a school that you guys will enjoy and you guys will feel comfortable working in that's got the right environment however it's also one of the hardest ones because you don't know what you're looking for in a school at this time before you've worked in a school for a length of a time before you've been responsible for a class in a school you don't know whether that school will be right for you or not go around a few see what you like the feel for you might get a feeling you might not and if you do get the feeling that it's right for you then go for it and pick that over another school that might have the right kind of academy status that might have the right kind of grades pick what's going to work for you as a person and with the other staff and feel that feeling that you'll settle in there well. Probably the most important reason to pick a school, so I'd definitely say go for that over maybe grades or academy status, anything like that. Number two says getting to know your students. So again, really, really important here, guys. Getting to know your students is so important. Lots of teachers that I've seen do their first year. They struggle the most because they either go in too hard or too soft with their class. Now, you need to remember whether you're teaching primary or secondary, especially in primary school, you're teaching a bunch of children and they are still children. They're not adults. They don't know what it's like to be professional in a professional environment. So you need to get to know them as people themselves. And this one's really good. You want to have a good relationship with your students, but remember that you're not their friend. So you've got to have that professional line and you've got to be the one that actually says what we can do in class is what we can't do in class. And you're the one that's towing that line. Basically everything that goes on in that classroom is you. So definitely you're not their friend, but you're keeping yourself in check and you're keeping them in check. And it'll really help you guys progress through with the class. And once they get to know you, once you get to know them, you're going to work with them really, really well. Here we have got planning lessons. Planning lessons is an interesting one because they said you can begin by collecting all documents you might use and you have a USB to save all your files. Now, this is one where I'm not really sure how useful this will be unless you get some information before. So obviously each school plans lessons very, very differently. The way I plan lessons now is completely different to my first placement school, my second placement school, my third placement school while I was doing my training. If I had saved any of that work that I'd done then, any of the planning and brought it to this school, it would have been absolutely useless because they did it in a different format, they did it in a different way. And so I think if you can talk to the school and find how they do their planning first, that'd be something very interesting to ask when you go to interview, for example, then absolutely do that, talk to them and see how they do it. And if you can do some work based off that, then definitely get some planning done in advance, bring it with you on your first day, obviously you'll need as much planning as you've got and see if that can help. But don't bring stuff that you don't know or you know won't fit the right format because frankly, your school won't want to, they'll ask you to do it again anyway. So it's an interesting one. Once you know the planning format, once you've got that, then definitely I love this bit of advice, planning far in advance as you can. At the minute, I'm generally trying to stick two weeks in advance because that gives me enough flexibility to not plan loads and things change and have to do it all again but to be fine out of the head that I'm not worrying about getting stuff done each week. Now, I think they've got a bunch of other tips here which I'm not going to read them all to you go have a look I'll link this put this link in the description down below as well. Get an idea of what you're doing first before you jump in doing a whole load of planning because I don't want you guys to have to do loads of work and then obviously have to redo it. Number four once you've got into the school getting to know your colleagues again absolutely huge guys this one relationship with other employees in the school is massive these are the people you'll be working alongside yeah, like it says here, it's sources of advice and support, a good professional network. This will be so, so important for you as you progress through your teaching. A school with a good environment is better than any grades you might get in your university degree, any grades you might get your children to get while you're teaching them. If you've got that good support with you at school, things like observations, things like deadlines, all those kind of things kind of, they don't matter so much because you know you'll do them, your staff knows you'll do them, your head teacher will know you'll get everything done and you know the way you're going to do it too. So I think this one is so, so important. I can't emphasize enough here, even though it's not number four on the list maybe I think it should be number one getting to know your colleagues and working together as a group and as a staff if you can do that well and you can really enjoy doing that then I think that one is huge so yeah getting to know your colleagues make sure that you can talk to them and you can ask questions and everything's done in a professional and a nice manner with them then that would be brilliant number five here is staying up to date so here making the most of your training during this period recording all the professional development you're doing on your PDP your school will have a version of it is where you keep track of all the training you do now this is something that again is very important to make sure 
your knowledge is up to date, but your school will take care of this for you. If you've got a mentor, well, you will have a mentor going through your ECT period. This is where they'll make sure you're going and training, you're recording it all, you're keeping up to date with everything that is going on throughout the year. And definitely, I think that's something that is important and you do need to do it, but it's something that I wouldn't worry about trying to book yourself onto any training because you'll get booked onto it yourself by your Hadija, I'm absolutely sure. Classroom management, key to being a successful teacher. And it's something to focus on in your initial teacher training in your ECT period of your first two years, but it's something that you're definitely not going to master. I think having taught for four years, I'm only just starting to get to the point where I'm comfortable walking into any class in the school and knowing I can command their attention. Now that's taken me almost four years to get to that point. Four years of being in the same school where the children know me, I've built up a reputation for being a teacher that I'd like to hope is a fair one and I'd like to hope the children actually enjoy me being in the classrooms, but it's taken me that long and I would say that's probably about an average time period for a teacher to get to that point. Your ECT period is now two years, so obviously the NQT one was only one year. You've got an extra year there to help you with this and to help develop and have that extra support, but it's not something that you're gonna get on day one. I'd be very, very shocked if anyone managed to, and if they are, maybe they'll be the best teacher in the world, who knows? Rules, routines, and expectations clear from the beginning. Reinforce the boundaries, they try and test them. Definitely, those bits of advice are absolutely key, but you know, your boundaries might change, the rules might change, expectations might change. You might set your expectations too high, too low. This is where I think it's really important to ask questions of the staff, and why I'd go back to number four, up here, getting to know your colleagues, and making sure you can talk to them about why it's so important. Because once you've got this down, then you're a successful teacher. But if you don't have it down, then you need to have people around you that you can ask for help and advice and support from. And it will be something that almost every ECT teacher will struggle with at some point. So definitely making sure we can get that sorted. Number eight, again, this one's huge. Your ECT period, especially now it's two years, is gonna be a very long, very stressful two years with extra deadlines, extra assessments, extra work for you to do over that time on top of your normal teacher workload. So that's where your well-being will be massive. Don't forget about your mental health and well-being while you're working. You may be busy, but take time to de-stress and be yourself. All of my videos on here, I always try and make sure I'm focusing at some point on your well-being and on teachers' well-being, mental health, getting outside, doing something fun, doing something for you. So make sure you are maintaining that work-life balance and you're doing that for yourselves, guys, because it is absolutely so, so important. And I will always continue to tell you guys it's so, so important because it really is. Now this one, maybe I'm going to put a star on this one, number nine, asking for help and say that actually, you know what, maybe this is number one alongside working with your colleagues because I think the two go hand in hand and yet asking for help is so just the number one thing you can do. If you don't ask for help and you're going through and you're struggling with something, then there'll be no way of showing that you're actually trying to work on it and improve on it. At the end of the day, you're trying to impress your mentor, you're trying to impress your head teacher and prove to them why they you want to stay on. Most ECT teachers are given a temporary contract of maybe a year or a two year one for the two year ECT period. And you're proving to them why at the end of that, you deserve to move up the pay scale, get a permanent contract and work at that school if you want to. So by asking for help, they're not going to look at you and think, oh, they don't know what they're doing. They're going to see somebody who's trying to develop themselves, who's trying to improve their subject knowledge, who's trying to improve their teaching pedagogy, who's trying to improve their knowledge of the subject area they're talking about. That's someone who's trying to be the best teacher they can, not someone who's struggling. So yeah, asking for help, guys, absolutely key. Now, this is the first one. As you can see, they've got some other resources if you want to go over a look. Like I said, the link is in the description down below. We're going to move on to number two, which is on here from Opus Education. So again, 6th September 2021, this is from the start of this school year, and we're going to talk about some other bits about finding a job here all right so for an ECT teacher first up it says CV building lots of people have CVs lots of people have one CV and they send it to every school or every job they ever apply to this one is talking about how you have to tailor your CV to the job you're looking for so if you've got a CV and you've sent it to maybe you're at university you've got a part-time job in a restaurant or a bar or a cafe or something like that that CV might not be good enough to get your job in a school so update it to make sure you've got things on there like your qualifications like any training you've done in primary schools and secondary schools, that kind of thing to make sure it's fresh and ready for applying for a teaching role, not just for a part-time role while you're doing training or something like that. So yeah, your CV building, definitely make sure it's relevant and apply to the school you're going for. Same thing with your application. Go through your application form and make sure you're not sending, answering all the questions and sending out the same application form to every school exactly the same. The questions you answer, the teachers will be reading them or the head teachers looking at your application, reading them relevant to their school, not just schools in general. So make sure you've looked at the school website before you fill out the application and that you're writing stuff down that will help that school 
get ready for having you as a teacher. It will show them that you, you're interested in the school, you've got ideas that you want to expand on in the school, and that actually you bothered to think about it. If they're getting a whole load of different applications and they're all just the same bland answers, yours is going to stand out if you've personalised it, if you've got the school name in there a load of time, if you've got the school motto, the school ethos, something from the depth that's probably on the website, depth that the journey is moving forward and developing excellence plan, I think it's called. Down here, we've got networking, so obviously networking, talking to different teachers, building up relationships with the teachers. Very important, I'd say it's something to focus on as you move through your ECT period, maybe not right at the start, because I think at the start you should focus on you and get yourself comfortable with what you're doing, but definitely as you meet more people, as you go to different schools, start making links, start talking to other teachers and build from there. And going out at the extra mile. So this says here, it's critical you always start as you mean to go on. Arrive early and at the end of the day, it never hurts to ask if you can do anything else or maybe stay a little later. So the school will know you're going the extra mile. This is one where I'm going to put a big star on this one and say, mm, maybe. If you're the type of person that wants to arrive early and stay late, then absolutely. But it all depends on you and how you like to work. Hopefully you'll be working in a school that's got the right ethos, the right mindset to know that as long as you're getting the work done, it doesn't matter when or where you do it. I think this is one where teachers' mental health can suffer because pressure gets put on the teachers to get there really early, to stay really late. And actually, you know what? It doesn't always need to be that way. If you can get the work done without doing that, then do that. At the minute, because I've got a newborn child, I tend to not get to school as early as I used to. I leave earlier than I used to. Now, that's not mean I'm any worse teacher than I was. I'm just prioritizing my time better and I'm doing work at home more. I'm doing work more efficiently when I'm at school. That doesn't mean anything in terms of the work that I'm producing. I'm still producing quality work. The children are still learning well. They're still behaving well in class. It just depends on your situation. So I'm doing this, guys, because not all these pieces of advice I think are the best. Sometimes you do need to take them with a little pinch of salt and say, actually, maybe not always that one. Final three, marking, planning. We'll look at these two first. Marking, planning, again, this depends on your policy. It says here, if you're in doubt, ask school what the marking policy is. Absolutely do that, guys. Ask what the policy is. Make sure you're following it. If it's really strict and really regimented, then make sure you give yourself some time to learn what it is and get used to it. If it's a bit more relaxed, then make sure you're following it carefully still because you do need to keep your marking on top. Same with planning, be organized, make sure you've got lesson plans in the event that something doesn't happen. Again, this is maybe more for supply teaching, but for any teaching, have some lesson ideas that you think if something goes wrong, you've got half an hour spare, you didn't know what to do, have something ready that you can whip out on the table and get going with. Even if it's just a fun game for the kids to play, something like that, just so you're not sat there twiddling your thumbs going, oh no, because there's nothing worse than a class of bored children. They will go off the rails, you'll pull your hair out and it will all kind of go to pot. So have some ideas of things that you can just do anytime you get a bit of half an hour, even if it's just reading story to the kids. Something like that, where you can just say, actually, you know what, guys, this is what we're doing for the next half an hour. Let's get on with it. Again, show you the boss, show you're decisive, and they'll follow your lead. Now, this final one, I think, again, massive start, but for a good reason. This is probably the most important one I've read maybe today. Definitely on this page from Opus Education, the TA or TAs in your class have a fantastic relationship with your students. This is true because they've probably been there for years longer than you, probably years longer than the students. They might have seen them grow from when they were two, three years old in the nursery at your school. Build a proper rapport with them and a great working relationship they'll be your biggest asset while working on supply this is true for any teacher working in any school especially an ect teacher i cannot begin to imagine how i got through the last four years without the tas that i've worked with in my NQT year i worked with an amazing ta and she definitely helped me get through that year i don't think i'd have passed it without her some days and now i've got two amazing tas in my class and it still is going so well we've got such a good relationship we bounce off each other i genuinely enjoy going to school because i get to work with them every single day and i'd like to hope that's the same for what they think of me but yeah I think this one here absolutely huge make sure you are really really enjoying working with them guys that is the end of this video a bit of a whistle stop tour really whiz through all that I hope you've managed to keep up if you've got any questions then please leave them down in the comments below and I'll try and get back to you as quickly as I can if you are looking into moving into teaching or starting your ECT period this September then good luck I hope you enjoy it and if you have any questions during those two years or during the rest of your career then you know what send me a, send me a message drop me a comment get on one of the social medias that I'm on and comment on something and I'll get back to you and hopefully I'll be able to help and if not I'll find someone who can. Thanks very much for watching guys and I'll see you Tuesday Friday at five o'clock.